Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse 13, it's on page 1344, 44, 1344 in the Pew Bible. Page 1344. This is the last petition that is in the Lord's Prayer. There are two or three things that I, I see about the Lord's Prayer have, have looked at for a long time uh, with, this, with this. We have a lot of petitions in, in this. And did you know that when it comes to the, that right down to it, a good deal of this of the Lord's prayer deals with sin our sin and we look at this uh, 13th verse and I'm, we're going to I'm going to read it in just a moment and we think of uh, of asking God to keep us away from evil But I think you need to look at it in a different fashion today because it, that fashion is there. This is the only petition that is given in the Lord's Prayer about the future. The rest of them are Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts. Forgive our debtors as we forgive our debtors. And then he says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. When I think about the future, and this is leading into the future because we're asking him to lead us not into temptation. That's going to be in the future. That's tomorrow. That's the next minute. That's the next week, the next year. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from it. What is it that you shrink from in the future? What scares you about the future? Is it sickness? I'm going to tell you something. Every time somebody dies with cancer like Joe Dorsey did this, this past week, we pray for our health. We ask God to keep us from, from, uh, from that, uh, that illness. Or maybe, maybe it's, uh, I'll not be able to pay my debts one day. Maybe it's poverty. So we pray and we save for a rainy day. That's what we do. Maybe it's suffering. I don't know whether I can suffer so we pray for safety. We don't know whether we, we are going to be accepted by other folks. So we pray because we're scared of unpopularity for God to, to help us to be popular. Maybe it's old age we're scared of. I want to tell you something. Don't be afraid of it. Just accept it and bear with it. That's all I can say for you. Maybe it's death. I don't know what it is out in the future that you may be afraid of. But when Jesus told us to pray for the future, he does not mention any of these things that I mentioned to you. Not one. He told us to fear the possibility of doing bad things, of doing wrong. That's the one thing that he wants us to see about our future. You see, our very strength is our greatest weakness because the overconfidence in our own strength leads to our downfall. And so he says to us, pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. He wants us to be encouraged. 
So he inspired Paul to write to the Corinthian church, let, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Well, let's go back. You think about temptation. What is it? Lead us not into temptation. What is it? Well, there are two things I want to share with you about, two ways to look at this thing. The first one is what you normally think about, and that is that temptation is an inducement to do something bad, to do something evil. You remember the Garden of Eden, don't you? You remember the story of how uh, Satan came to Eve and he tempted her to go to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and we don't know whether it's an apple or not. Some people say it's a tomato, so I don't know what it is. We don't understand and know what it is. But we do know that God said don't eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Thou shalt not of God. That's what God said. Thou shalt not. And whenever we look at the story in that, from that perspective, perspective or in this perspective it's a battle between the thou shalt not that God said and the bright alluring promise of forbidden pathways that Satan says or gives us I want you to think about every temptation that you have I don't care what it is. I'm diabetic, and I, uh, I, love, I love sweets, and I can't help but love sweets. And I think probably nearly every diabetic in here said, can say the same thing. I'm diabetic, and I'm not supposed to eat a bunch of sugar, but I do love sweets. I love them. I can't help it. I could eat a half a churn of homemade ice cream right now if somebody were to make it. And it wouldn't matter whether it was the, the peach or, or peanut butter. It's good. It's any way you want to make it. It's good. It's a temptation to me. I should not do that. And so it becomes a temptation to me. But temptations are always, in this light, are always about the allurement of the forbidden. But then there's a second way to look at this. Temptation can also be a test or a trial. It's a fork in the road, just like a fork in the road. We must make a decision. Decision to take this road instead of this road. Or the decision to do this thing or not do this thing. The decision of what kind of character I'm going to be, I'm going to possess. A mother whose son was killed is tempted to become bitter, very bitter. A difficult situation may cause a person to turn to drink and he becomes very bitter. A bedridden person may be tempted to self-pity. And that's the case. All you got to do is be a pastor in, in South Georgia or South Mississippi. And then you can go to houses of shut-ins. And you can tell immediately which one has Christ in their hearts and which ones do not. Because the ones who have Christ in their heart are bright and chipper and glad to see you. And the others comes and they are bitter because they cannot get out of the house. Jesus did face the sense of temptation in, the, in this prayer in both senses. He knew how hard it was to conquer temptation. And he was tempted in all points like as we are. 
according to Hebrews 4.15. He was tempted in all points. Did he, he didn't have a cigarette to smoke, did he drink the wine he made, water into wine? Probably. I don't know whether he did or not, but he may have. Is that the temptation he's talking about? Both being tempted to do evil is essentially a spiritual struggle involving our wills. God says no, we say yes. God says thou shalt not, and we say I shalt. That's the temptation that we are, ta- we are faced with. And yet, it's far on the level of our personal desires, what we want to do. You know, we can justify any kind of uh, sin or evil that comes our ways. We can justify almost any of them. But Jesus said, when you pray, pray, lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Our greatest temptation could be a test for our development. God gave us freedom of choice. We can choose between good and evil. We can choose between being true and being false. We can choose between being generous or being selfish. We have the opportunity to choose in beto- between anything. We are created, we're created to have choice. That's the reason God gave that temptation in the very beginning, that law in the very beginning. Thou shalt not eat of the fruit of the tree of life, which is in the middle of the garden. He gave us that opportunity. Why did he do that? Why did he do that? This is this temptation that I'm talking about is a struggle of deciding to control our lives or deciding for Christ to be our guide or Satan to be our guide. And in this prayer Jesus is saying, don't let Satan be your guide in the future in things that you do. I'm going to tell you, life would be much simpler if we had no such freedom, wouldn't it? Boy, you don't know how many times I have thought about that in in my lifetime. If Adam and Eve had not tasted that apple or that tomato, or that fruit, boy, what an easier life we would have on this earth. You ever thought about that? Have that ever run through your mind? It has mine. Life would be much simpler. But the freedom to do right requires the freedom to do wrong. I don't care what any Philosophers say to you, political philosophers or otherwise, say to you, there is a dichotomy of things in the world. There's right and it's matched by wrong. There is thirst and it's it's matched by satisfaction. That choice is there. It's there for us. God gave each of us a free will. And yet the very possession of that freedom should so frighten us that in every possible way we need to throw every safeguard we can throw at it and say, leave me alone. And that's the reason that Jesus said, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. Praying this prayer 
means something else too. It means it can be answered. I want you to leave with that in your mind. Jesus' followers were to pray that they would not be exposed to temptation. Don't lead us into temptation. We're not always able to choose that way that he gave. We can rest assured that God never allows us to be tempted beyond which we can bear. Paul said in 1 in Corinthians, the 7th chapter, I believe it is, in the 13th verse, that he will not tempt us beyond which we can bear, but will with the temptation make a way of escape. You see, when we resist, don't resist sin, we will sin. We will. Sometimes this prayer is answered by what we call coincidence. It is in my life, and it, it may be like this. Have you ever had a job and went for a job interview and you were turned down? And you went home and you said, why did I, why did I not get that job? And then about 10 months later, the company goes under. You ever been like that? You ever had a job? Hmm. I've, all, I've had one, one uh, church, little church that God led me to over in, over in uh, Metter, Georgia, out from Metter, Georgia, while I was teaching at Georgia Southern College. And, uh, and I stayed there six months. And my church and the uh, college that I went to called me and wanted me to come over to be a teacher at, their, at uh, my alma mater. Now, what, when you make a choice between Georgia Southern and your alma mater, what do you do? You go to your alma mater. <laughs> That's what you do. I was six months at that little church. Six months. Why, God, did you let me go six months? But then I realized 24 people accepted Christ in that six months. Had the most unusual baptism I've ever had in my life. Of a man who had diabetes, and we had to wrap his feet with plastic, and we had to back him off into a, into a, a sand pit filled with water to do the baptism uh, at, because he couldn't go into the pool. He was too big for all of us to pick up, and he couldn't go into the pool at the church. One of, I will never forget that baptism. But why did he do that to me? Why? Maybe God was intervening in that. Sometimes he intervenes for us through insight. You just know all of a sudden, that deep inside of you, you know what the right course is. And sometimes there's an inner strength which God gives you to, uh, to all who desire it. But the big lie is this. Take this out of the door with you. After all, we're only human. Now, I'm going to tell you, as a preacher, I have had that used many a time. I had a, had a, had a, per, a person say to me uh, that he loved to go to the uh, mall uh, because he would sit down in the middle of the mall and his, let his wife just shop to her heart's content, and he would sit out there and look at the girls when they went by. I said, boy, don't you know that's a sin? <laughs> no, it ain't a sin. Jesus said when you look on a woman to lust after her, that's when you sin. And he said, I just looked at this one and this one and this one and this one and this one. I don't stay long enough to lust. That's what he said. But I'm going to tell you something. It may not be a good way to go. It just may be his way to do what it is. But I do know this. When we surrender and quit the struggle, we don't, or we can, we can take a different view. When we become acquainted with the power that's beyond ourselves. 
Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. God is able to deliver us. He never wants us to yield to temptation. He never wants us to be filled with despair. He never wants us to be stained with sin. You see, look at yourself as a parent. A good parent does have a deep desire to see his child mature and grow into a strong, complete person. And that's what God wants for us. Children don't grow up in one day, and we don't mature as Christians in one day. If you pray the prayer and you sin, God expects you to come back and make a lifetime of being perfect with it all. Remember teaching a child to walk? Did you ever do that? You get him up and you let him hold your fingers and he tippy toes across. You then t give him one finger and then he tippy toes across. Then you watch him fall down several times and you want to pick him up. And that's what it is. The child falls, he gets up, and he tries again. When the Christian sins, he falls, he gets up, and he tries again. And that's what Jesus was saying to us when he, met, when he said, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Would you bow your heads with me, please? God, how good you have been to us, and we're grateful. We're most grateful for Jesus Christ, our Savior, who saves us from sin. And even in this prayer, you have taught us that sin's going to come. Temptation may be there, but we have to depend upon you to help us through. And we do, Father, we do. Give us your grace now. As we, as we sing our song of invitation, for we ask this in Jesus' name, amen.